Your Coca-Cola bottler presents Claudia. Claudia, based on the original stories by Rose Franken. Brought to you, transcribed Monday through Friday, by your friendly neighbor who bottles Coca-Cola. Relax, and while you're listening, refresh yourself. Have a Coke. And now, Claudia. Good morning, darling. I said, good morning, sleepyhead. Claudia? Claudia? Where are you? Claudia? I'm in here on the sofa. Good morning. Oh, good morning, Mrs. Norton. Did you spend a pleasant night on the sofa? I like my own bed better, thank you. But the kitten and kittens enjoyed it here. They just simply refused to go to sleep unless I stayed with them. Every time I left them to go back to bed, they just started crying all over again. Yes, I heard them. I tried everything to keep them quiet. Hat box, that deep chair over there, a pillow under the stove. So you left your bed and board to sleep on the sofa with a couple of kittens. Something new and trying. Cat angles. <laughs> Husband, wife, and kittens. <laughs> Well, you're the one that brought them home. Oh, look at them. Aren't they sweet? Hey, move over. Move over. Hey, be careful. You practically sat on them. And you, their father. I suppose you think these kittens look upon you as their mother. Well, they haven't got any other mother now. Well, don't let it go to your head. I think they show wonderful taste in adopting me, don't you? I do. Well, just remember, I showed it first. Oh, so you did. I guess I'll have to come back to you tonight. By the way, how's your cold? Oh, much better. Oh, it is? Mm Mm-hmm. Good. Hey, David, you'll have to lean over and kiss me because I can't lean over to kiss you on account of I'm awful a cat. Hello, David. Hello. You look like the feline version of Whistler's mother. Hey, don't pull away. Let me feel your forehead. <laughs> I should have known that kiss was nothing but a decoy. I meant the kiss, darling. The forehead was an afterthought. Well, I fooled you. I haven't got a fever. Who said you did? You had that look in your eye. You're getting a complex about that look in my eye. It's no wonder. For the past few days, every time you've looked at me, I've felt as though I was getting a complete medical examination. You probably should get one. I'm sorry I brought it up. I should have known better. Don't bother about breakfast, darling. I'll no? catch a bite on the way up to Redberry. Redberry? David, you're not planning to go all the way up to Connecticut today. I am. Why shouldn't I? In this weather, I wouldn't think of it. Why, you, you, you've hardly gotten over your cold. Darling, I am going to Redbury. I am driving out there this morning. I have Who to. Who says you have to? I says I have and to. And I says you don't. I may. I say I only may that you go to the office, but not to Redbury. See, the kitten says so, too. He did not. That kitten distinctly said, stick to your guns, old boy. He didn't. He said, can't you two people <laughs> shut up and let me sleep? <laughs> Oh, David, won't you listen to reason about going to Redberry? No. Won't you even listen to me? No. But I'm glad to see that you don't mention reason and yourself in the same breath shows progress. Very clever. Darling, I love you, but there are things I have to do. David, then will you wear your sweater under your jacket? I will wear two sweaters under my jacket. And don't forget your jacket. Darling, you better warm some milk for your little angels. On. Stay for dinner, Mama. David will be home in a little while. I'm having dinner with Aunt Louise, and oh. don't tell me I won't have as good a time as if I stayed here. You won't. Oh, aren't they the cutest little kittens you ever saw? I'll have to admit it, but it's too bad about kittens. What's too bad about kittens? That they have to grow up into cats. Oh, nothing in life is perfect, I guess. We haven't named them yet. Have you any ideas? I've only just met them. I guess we ought to wait until they've developed their personality. What are they? You have to know before you name them. Oh, that. They're boys, David said. At least the man in the pet shop promised him they were. Well, I hope the man in the pet shop keeps his promise. What happens to girl kittens? Doesn't anybody want them? Somebody must with all the cats in the world. Must be very hard to be born one with all this prejudice. Here, Mommy, you want to hold one? I do not. Go on. He won't hurt you. Go on. Oh, well, hand me the pillow first so I can put him on top. Oh, really, Mama? Little cat fuzz is healthy. For cats, but not for my good black wool. By the way, how's David's cold? He said fine. 
He went off to Redberry with a sweater under his jacket. Looking like the cat had eaten a canary. Which cat? One of these? Uh, and what canary? The one at eight. Oh, so you have a canary, too. How could we if he ate it? Feathers with, I suppose. No, he stuck those in his hat. Mm, the minute you have me eating my hat. <laughs> oh, listen to him. He's purring. Those mine. You know, Mom, animals are really most extraordinary. These little orange kittens, they're only a week old. And they talk and cry and purr and, and stumble around. You and... stood up at ten months without any help. Well, I should hope so. Lying around for ten months is a pretty long time to lie around. Oh, kitty, kitty. <laughs> you like to have your tummy rubbed, do you? Oh. Well, I'm not going to stay here all night to rub it. Mama, you know, I think maybe there's something the matter with this one. I feel his nose is boiling. Nonsense. Do you have to have something to worry about? No, really, I, I've been noticing it for the past half hour. He's, he's been acting funny. Put yours in the pillow, Mama. Come on over here. All right, but there's nothing the matter with him. Look, feel his nose. Claudia, feeling noses is for dogs. No, cats, too. How else could you tell about their temperature? They haven't any foreheads. Well, it does feel warm. And look, his little paws are cold. Is that bad? I wouldn't know. I've had practically no experience playing mother to a kitten. What do you think we ought to do? Well, maybe he's just tired. What did he do to make him tired? The other one isn't. Now, did you hear that? He doesn't act right. I, th I, I think I'm going to call the pet shop where David bought them to see what to do. Here, Mommy, you hold him, will you? Now, Kitty, take it easy. Everything is going to be all right. Oh, uh, tell the man he's sort of choking, Claudia. Oh, he is? Two, one, seven, four. How's he now, Mama? Shivering, poor little rascal. Cover him with your hand, Mama. Oh, the other one just fell off his pillow. You better pick him up. I've only got two hands. They are a handful, aren't they? I mean, two handfuls. Oh, hello. Oh, hello, Mr. Flannery. This is Mrs. Norton. You know, the kittens, the two little kittens you sew. That, that's right. That's the one. Oh, yes, I love them, but one of them is sick, and, and well, I, I don't know what's the matter. Could you? I hate to ask you, but could you come up here? And, I'd come to you, but... Oh, that's wonderful, Mr. Flannery. Thank you. Th you have the address. All right, goodbye. He said he'd be right up on his way home. Good. Now, stop petting him so much. Put him down. I'll cover him with my Angora sweater. Your best sweater? Yeah. Here. Yeah. Use my scarf. You're the dog man. I mean the man about the cat. Oh, uh, how do you do, lady? You're Mrs. Norton's mother, aren't you? Yes, come right in. In the living room. Ah, I came as soon as I closed up the shop. Very kind of you. Not at all. I know what it means to someone like Mrs. Norton. Oh, hello, Mr. Flannery. It's so nice of you. He's right here. He looks awful sick to me. Well, what do you think? Do you think he'll be all right? Well, no, that's not easy to say. Maybe it's uh, something he ate. Well, he shouldn't have eaten anything. He didn't. I gave him nothing but warm milk. Then that can't be the reason. Oh, come here, Buster. Turn over now like a good boy. Are you sure that's all you gave him, of Claudia? Of course I'm sure. A little warm milk with tiniest bit of egg in it, raw egg. Oh, just as I thought. For nourishment couldn't possibly hurt him. Could, could it, Mr. Flannery? Well, well, perhaps it's a little more than his own mother would have given him. Oh, if that's what did it, I'll never forgive myself. I just thought feeding him up a little. Well, after all, babies have formulas which are more than just milk, so why shouldn't baby kittens? Maybe this will cure you of the habit of slipping health potions into everybody's food. Mr. Flannery, what do you think? Well, no, Mrs. Norton, it's hard to tell with such a little fellow what the matter is. Uh, it's plain to see something is wrong. You're right there. Mm, could be his stomach or his lungs or something else. And I wouldn't know just how to <laughs> know which. I, I can understand that, Mr. Flannery. All his apparatus is such a small space. But what can we do? Well, no, very little more than nothing. Mother Nature knows a way around, though. Better than we do with things as small as kittens. I tell you, I'll put him right on top of a warm, hot water bottle. Oh, now, it's a good idea. And he will take a little milk, 
with the chill off it, hmm, give it to him, and give it to him slowly. Mama. Give it to him straight, Claudia. Mama, really, this is no time for jokes. I wasn't joking. Well, that's about all I can suggest. You know, taking these babies away from their mother is risky business, you know. Oh, yes, indeed, very risky business. But Mr. Norton seemed to... <laughs> I think it was very, very important. Well, he was just trying to be sweet. He he knows how I love kittens. But, Mr. Flannery, if you think this one needs his mother, I'll I'll return him to you. For the time being. Mm, I don't think it would make a particle bit of difference, you know. You, you've a lot more to offer him than Mrs. Mother Cat. That's awful nice of you, Mr. Flannery, but I don't know. A mother's something sort of special, particularly when you're sick. <laughs> Thank you. Now we'll just leave Buster here. And like as not, by morning, he'll be as frisky as he ever was. I hope so. Now cheer up, young lady. Kittens may be awfully small, but they don't give up quick. Why, I've seen them a lot worse off than this. And the next day, plain like nothing at all had happened. Everybody home? Hey. Hey, how are the kittens? David. Yeah, hello, hello, hello. Hello. Oh, it's a convention. Hello, Mother. Hello, David. David, one of the kittens got sick, so Mr. Flannery came over to help. Oh, that's that's very kind of you, Mr. Flannery. Do you uh, know what's the matter with him? Ah, he's going to be all right. And so is Mrs. Norton. <laughs> and we're running along now. Good night, everybody. Now, be sure and call me if you need me. Yeah, we, we will. will. But I hope we won't have to. Well, call away. Having a sick kitten's like having a sick child in the house. Good night. Good night, Mr. Flannery. Oh, David, there isn't anything we can do... And he, he can't even tell us where it hurts. You know, I'd, I'd really forgotten how small he was. He looks even smaller than he did. I, I've got to get him a hot water bottle. Oh, David, how's your cold? Oh, all better. And see, I'm back from Redberry, safe and sound. I'm glad. You don't look very glad. Hey, hey, come here, darling. I haven't got time now. I, later, I'll show you how glad. Oh, David, he will get better, won't he? Tell me he will. I hope so, darling. He's just got to. Come on, Kitty, we'll go in the bedroom. Hmm? She gets attached to things, David. It's never been easy for her to let go. Oh, she'll learn, Mother. It's one of the lessons in life we can't escape. But I'd be very sorry if one of my little red herrings is the one to teach her. Your little red what, David? <laughs> My little red herrings, That's mother. what I thought you said. And I think I know what you mean. I suppose if it hadn't been for them taking up Claudia's energies, you'd never have been allowed out of bed today. You're a pretty wise old duck, Mrs. Brown. Did I hear you call Mama a duck again? Oh, she has ears in the back of her head, that child. <laughs> All story material used on this broadcast of Claudia was under the supervision of Rose Franken and William Brown Maloney. Strange how that friendly phrase, have a Coke, makes people feel at home. It's as though you said, come, relax, refresh yourself. And while we're on that subject, why not work refreshed? Why not enjoy the pause that refreshes before you pick up that mop or dishcloth again? It's a pleasant custom that makes work hours easier. Try it. Every day, Monday through Friday, Claudia comes to you transcribed with the best wishes of your friendly neighbor who bottles Coca-Cola. So listen again tomorrow at the same time. And now this is Joe King saying... Au revoir, and remember, whoever you are, whatever you do, wherever you may be, when you think of refreshment, think of Coca-Cola, for ice-cold Coca-Cola makes any pause the pause that refreshes.